goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Let's get off into the good shit, the great shit, the wonderful shit that Black people are doing, experiencing, receiving, and creating out here in the world. And the first story comes to us from BlackNews.com, and it is about a Black mom and daughter duo making history by opening an apparel store in one of LA's most luxurious malls. So, Lakeisha Jackson and her daughter, Caitlin, are making history as the first African-American mom and daughter duo to open a Black-owned lifestyle athletic leisure apparel store for women at the high-end Topanga Mall in Los Angeles. Their company, SGH Apparel, is a lifestyle brand dedicated to super women who are movers and shakers, risk takers, and goal getters. Their line of athleisure products includes trendy sports bras, leggings, shorts, t-shirts, tanks, crop tops, and more for women on the go. So if you're a woman on the go, if you like your sporty clothing that can, you know, kind of go from one phase to another of the day, you know what I mean? Holla at these ladies, especially if you are in the LA area, uh, Lakeisha Jackson and Caitlin Jackson, uh, mother-daughter duo. Really dope, man. Making history out here in the world. So yeah, man. Dopeness. Loving this entrepreneurial spirit that I'm seeing spark up in uh, our people lately. Like, I feel like the pandemic has been horrible in a lot of ways, but one of the good ways is that it's sparking a lot of people's creativity and having them just kind of reach for their passions. So, I love it. If it occurs. Indeed, indeed, indeed. But shout out to Lakeisha and Caitlin Jackson. Uh, The next story comes to us from blacknews.com as well. And HBCU makes an offer to recruit a team basketball player with one arm. Hansel Emmanuel Donato Dominguez, a 17-year-old from, from Florida who is a star basketball player with just one arm, has been offered a full scholarship to play for Tennessee State University and HBCU in Nashville. At the age of six, Emmanuel had his left arm amputated when a wall collapsed on him while he was playing in his native Dominican Republic. His father was able to rescue him but only after two hours of being trapped, causing him to lose his arm. Despite the limitation, Emmanuel pushed through and became a skillful basketball player. He moved to the United States in 2020 after receiving a scholarship to play basketball at Life Christian Academy in Kissimmee, Florida. Most recently, he earned his Division I offer and he took to Instagram to say, blessed to receive my first D1 offer from Tennessee State University. His parents, especially his father, Hansel Salvador Donato, who was a former basketball player in the Dominican Republic, are proud of him. So shout out to our Afro-Latino brother, Hansel Emmanuel Donato Dominguez. One arm dude out here hooping on him, proving, you know, ain't no limitations, ain't no excuses, ain't no reason you can't reach for your goal. Like, if he can do it with one arm, us two, us able-bodied folk ain't got no damn excuse. So reach for your dream, folks. Shout out to the young king. You do more with one arm than I can. <laughs> Bruh, you hear me? You hear me? This next uh, story is coming to us from News One. And it is, could restoring voting rights to formerly incarcerated people explain the number of black senators? So we got a new ruling in North Carolina that's uh, coming, that's going to be putting an end to a racist practice that dates back to the Civil War. And it could lead to more black U.S. Senators. So, fulfilling a promise over 50 years in the making, the North Carolina court extended the right to vote to people formerly incarcerated for felonies. Lawyers and advocates say that this is the single largest grant of voting rights in North Carolina since 1965 Voting Rights Act was passed. In a two-to-one decision, a North Carolina State Superior Court panel of judges found that the law disallowing formerly incarcerated people from voting unless they have completed probation or parole was unconstitutional. The written opinion is expected later this week. So later this week, we should be getting that in writing. Um, People with felonies in the state of North Carolina, um, hey man, if you're on probation or parole, you're gonna still be able to vote. And that's a large black voter block in North Carolina that's about to get voting rights. So. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely can see how this is about to lead to some heavy swings in that state. 
So shout out to them. Please make sure this gets put into black and white. Please, 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 when the polls come, y'all people that have been disenfranchised before now, y'all get out there and vote, have your voice heard, uh, and let this be a lesson and uh, uh, a pathway to other states to do the same type of thing. Y'all get out there on that poll. I mean... <laughs> All on that poll. <laughs> I'm done, yo. What the fuck? How are we about to go there tonight? Here we go. All right, we're going to get to the... All right. Uh, I believe um, Virginia, they already passed something that the fellas let's go. can. Come on, Eastern um, Eastern, Eastern Shore. I think so. I am looked that up, but I believe so with the last um, name, Terry. I can't pronounce his last name, but it was the governor I could pronounce that, and I had something in the mail that said something about that, so... Well, come on, I'll lead the way uh, east, east Coast, because uh, West Coast has been uh, coming strong these past few weeks. So, uh, East Coast, let's go now. Come on with it. Um, and in the next story, um, another law coming in our favor. It's rare that that happens, but we getting to them this week. And this, again, comes from NewsOne.com. A new Illinois law will ban schools from discriminating against natural hairstyles. So, for the longest, you know, we've been kind of – our natural locks, our natural hair coils, our natural whatever you want to call them has been kind of frowned upon. So now we're going to be able to rock our hair in peace. So hairstyles can oftentimes be the ultimate form of personal expression, especially during those formative years of adolescence into early puberty. Many black boys and girls, unfortunately, don't know what that freedom feels like when they go to school, since many institutions have rules in place that determine what's considered to be an appropriate hairstyle. Thankfully, the state of Illinois is changing that policy with a new law prohibiting schools from ruling against braids, twists, and any hairstyle historically associated with race and ethnicity. So this is going to look out also for other people of Native descent who have hairstyles that kind of go along with whatever their Native cultures are. But Black people, no longer will they be able to kick you out of schools, tell you you can't play a sport or do all of this in Illinois. Um, if you got locks or braids or cornrows or whatever the case may be, if you got Bantu knots, whatever it is, you wear your hair. So uh, this is signed by Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. The ruling was inspired by four-year-old black student Gus Jet Hawkins, who was instructed to take his braids out since it violated the dress code at his school in Chicago. Fittingly enough, the measure was actually named after him, officially being called the Jet Hawkins Law. So... Shout out to Illinois Governor uh, J.B. Pritzker for doing the right thing. And hopefully other states, you know, again, man, let, let's get these dumb laws that are still on, these antiquated laws that are still on the books just eradicated. So we can go on and uh, move on to more pressing issues, like new things that are coming on the horizon. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Illinois, man. Lots, um, lots is a form of uh, rebellion anyway from um... – just on the that. origin of it anyway. And I was going to say that. that's dope to have Shake a your dreads. Shake your nappy <laughs> dreads. You mm. hear me? Boy! Boy, if you don't get the hell out of here with that shit. <laughs> if y'all can see face <laughs> right now. He <laughs> over here shaking nothing. <laughs> About to put a quick to have. <laughs> it's dope to have a, a law in your name. Yeah, Man, you got a dope law. name. Man, he, gonna, uh, he got a legacy already, and he's still a kid. He's four years old. I am the law. <laughs> Literally. You hear me? Um, and then the last feel-good news story of the week, Charleston Poet Laureate pens a children's book on Black music. So Charleston's perennially, perennially creative poet laureate, Marcus Unmaker, has a new project just in time for the school year. This one is meant expressly for the next generation of music enthusiasts. This book is the first to be published by Free Verse Press, a new independent publisher of poetry books in the Charleston area. The company also produces Charleston's Free Verse Poetry Festival. But through rhythmic poetry and captivating visuals, Black music is, minds Black music's role in culture around the world. And it does so through the ears of an engaging main character in the feline variety. In a nod to jazz, his name is Bebop the Cat. So Black Music Is is the name of the book. And Poet Laureate uh, 
what is his name? Hot diggity dog. Marcus A. Maker, poet laureate from Charleston, South Carolina. Got this book out. So uh, if you're looking for a cool book uh, for children ages 8 to 12, go ahead and, you know, look this look for this book. Uh, it even uses a local Charleston artist, Nathan Durfee, as the illustrator. So um, it's a love letter to African-American music and history. So get out here, man, and support that book if you can, if, if you know, if it so suits your heart. But yeah, man, black black literacy out here. And, you know, it's supporting music, which is definitely strong in our culture and speaks to our children's mind. Our children actually learn better through rhythmic learning. So getting them exposed to music at an early age actually helps to increase their math and science scores. So get them into it, man. And Bebop and Rocksteady do not be beefing with Bebop the cat. That's, we, we don't need these cartoon on cartoon beats. I know that was random, but I just felt like saying. Man, get the <laughs> hell out of here that boy. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, man. So that is the positive black news you can use. Um, Hopefully that lifted your week, inspired you. And it's definitely been a week where we can use some good news. 